Okay, so uh, we are 20. I think that we can uh, we can start. So hello everybody, it's Francesco from Mama Games, and I'm here you. Uh, I'm here to host uh, uh, Zafcho. Uh, she is the uh, director of digital strategy and partnership at Animoca Brands. She has extensive knowledge and uh, experience in different business uh, areas, uh, both in startup, retails food tech, uh, in tech, and then finally blockchain gaming. So uh, I leave the stage to Zaf that she's going to introduce us to the risks and opportunities of blockchain gaming, and uh, she's going to introduce it a little bit on Animoca Brands. Thank you very much. Um, so uh, thank you very much for having me today as well. Um, and I am working on different things in Animoca Brands. One thing that I'm spearheading right now is the play to earn aspect. So I look into um, investment in games and guilds and trying to bring synergy between them um, because we have a great network in, in guild and guild has been playing a really important role in um, promoting and adopting the play to earn games um, since last year. So um, this is one thing that I'm looking into right now. And the other thing I'm taking lead on is the mass adoption of NFT and metaverse in general, because this space is still really early and we're trying to leverage like different kind of par partners to go into the space like for example music uh we, we form a jv with k-pop entertainment company called cube and uh, we're working on different projects like um on, on the fashion side on um entertainment side like collaboration with comics and and more and really, I'm really happy to be here today to talk about like what's the trend of the play to earn games and how do Animoca brands evolving um, along the journey and um, how do we see the, the industry is evolving in, in the near future. So uh, I'm going to talk about like some of the um, existing um, play to earn games that in the, in the area and also like how we see the uh, future is going to be for those games. So uh, I guess every one of you is really familiar with the game Axie Infinity. I'm not sure if any one of you here are looking into developing your own play to earn game. Um, I have a little polls on the other side. I guess uh, maybe you can key in some of your answers there. So far, I, I saw as 100% no. Uh, maybe uh, you guys are uh, exploring or looking to the space and curious about like what play to earn games can can do to the industry. I think um, to start with is about the whole like blockchain technology and how it enables the community to grow together. So having like NFT is is one thing to enable the holders to have like true true digital uh, assets, right? So. After owning the, the assets, um, they are actually free to trade and uh, free to upgrade their, their um, like maybe weapon or maybe um, an in-game assets is different from like traditional uh, gaming. I think like in traditional gaming, people are paying money for, for weapon, for skin, but they don't really get uh, anything like in return besides the entertainment and, and the joy, right? And we're seeing like this is a really good place to let blockchain to, to take over and um, the users can actually uh, make, I mean, take the advantage of the gaming assets being NFT. And um, besides of growing the community together, uh, they can actually be benefit directly from owning the certain NFT. So the incentive for, for people to promote the certain game is actually bigger. Like uh, in traditional gaming, even if I introduce more people to play the game and um, maybe I will get some like referral bonus or, or whatsoever, but uh, the, it, the incentive is not that direct. And also, uh, for example, if I... Uh, I'm an early player in Axie Infinity. Um, I, I bought in a lot of Axies and then the game got more popular and the demand of the NFT actually increased. So the value of my Axies would increase, right? And I think um, that's helped people who go into the game early to actually promote and, and pave, the pave, pave the path for uh, the late joiner. Uh, I'm not saying uh, this is like, some kind of like Ponzi scheme and the early joiner would get all the all the money. But uh, it seems so right now, I will drill into that later and how to 
um, like avoid something like this um, to to happen. So um, for for example, uh, for X Infinity, uh, a lot of people are saying that the 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 earning is actually quite off right now, and um, a lot of guilds are not so sure about what to do, and and they're waiting for the game to change a little bit. But uh, think in this way, if some other game developer are trying to develop a game like uh, with the use of the NFT from Axis, like they, because they have already like 200 million, uh, sorry, 2 million active users daily. If I want to create a game to attract the their user, I can actually create a game to let the NFT holder of Axie to go into the game. So immediately is a really good way to acquire user. This is like one potential use of um, the the advantage of NFT or blockchain technology in general. Um, but uh, of course, for developing such like play to earn game, we will have to look at uh, the balance of tokenomics. I did mention like earlier. X Infinity is really popular last year, and uh, the price of the token actually surged a lot last year. Uh, it increased to a point that is uh, allowing people earning maybe seven hundred or one thousand dollar per month, and it has actually attracted a lot of scholars in Philippines in Southeast Asia to join the game. And then right now, the token price is like sinking to the bottom and people are earning maybe a few dollars a, a, a month and it's like a huge drop. So to avoid something like this, we often, I mean, as any book of brands, we give uh, support not only financially to the games, but we provide tokenomic support and we try to figure out like what's the balance that we can we can provide. Like once the, the amount of a certain gaming assets actually increase um, like drastically, and how can we maintain the balance uh, between the supply and, and the amount? And we have a team of tokenomics studying this, a tokenomic expert studying this, and we provide um, tokenomic um, advisory to, to the play to earn game. Um, one example is that uh, we are planning to launch Phantom Galaxies. Not sure if you guys heard of this game. Let me try to play some video here. Um, hold on a second. So we tried to play this before, but since that we can't really play the music. But uh, let me try it again. Hold on. Yeah. Not sure if you guys can hear the sound. Uh, I guess it doesn't really matter. Uh, so Phantom Galaxy is like the uh, like a golden game that we will launch this year. Uh, so you can see it, the the graphic level is much better than the uh, play to earn games in the space, and uh, it's more like interactive and it's closer to traditional gaming. Uh, if you guys want to try, is uh, is free to. Play, actually like if you go into the uh, website early you just need to connect the wallet and you can get a free nft drop and uh, I, I'll have to mention like the uh, strategy behind this is quite uh, interesting because everyone is thinking like play it to earn game or nft is difficult or expensive to acquire right and uh, what we're trying to do with phantom galaxy is we're trying to change the tokenomics a little bit and we change the format of acquiring users. So uh, we we don't really uh, need people to to pay to buy NFT to start. And let me let me just stop this. Like uh, I think you guys can check this out later. Um, hold on. Yeah. So uh, we're trying to do something new with uh, with Phantom Galaxy, so uh, people can actually just link their wallet for um, non crypto native people. Uh, all they need to do is just open the MetaMask and then connect to the sites uh, of, of us, and then they don't have to do anything. They don't have to buy cryptocurrency. They don't have to figure out how to 
pay the gas fee or how to buy the NFT. They don't have to do anything. Just connect to our site and then you will get a free NFT to open the, the alpha or the season one. And then up, uh, you, you just need the season one NFT to go in and play. And after season one, completing the, the tasks and the quests inside of season one, you will get uh, the season two uh, NFT. And by doing this, we can actually filter people that are not really into the game, not into gaming, only speculating, because the people who stay behind are actually the true game player. And I think it's quite interesting that we take this approach and to ensure that we benefit the early adopter of the game, but not the investor or speculator. And I think this is a, a strategy you guys can look into as well. So uh, like, and and I think this this is uh, more than just uh, a new way to acquire users, but also a way to think about the, the economics in the game. Like uh, we did the free drop to 1.5 million of people, and then the second market trading volume is actually pretty high. And um, and the reason why is that like maybe people miss the, the drop period and they want to experience the game because the game itself is fun and the graphic is good. So people actually want to play the game and uh, they want to buy the entrance ticket to, to the game. So the secondary market trading is actually pretty good and uh, we can have the like revenue or earning from the trading fee and like the royalty in the secondary market sell. And I think this is a one new way to look into the play to earn games revenue side. If uh, I mean, uh, you guys are a game developer and looking into play to earn game. And, and also like one other thing that I have to mention is that uh, I believe that the quality of the game and the like level of fun and excitement of the games would be uh, like, of course, increase in, in the near future because uh, if you play Axie Infinity before, uh, it's not that fun or, or the graphic is not that uh, like impressive for a traditional gamer. But um, they're investing in multiple games that have the quality of Phantom Galaxies that we just showed you. And uh, it does look amazing when you are playing it. So I think uh, the, the trend is definitely going from like, um, simple games or like card games into more action game and like uh, those games people are paying uh, for the traditional gaming side. And um, also uh, the tokenomics that I have mentioned before is uh, is really important. And a lot of times that uh, the token owner, like the, uh, the fungible token owner, are the the ones who get benefit from the development of the game for so for phantom galaxies we we're not doing ido we're not doing token sell so how do you acquire the token is uh you have to buy like planet and like how to buy the planet is like you remember i mentioned about completing each level and then you would get a new nft so getting the uh, completion NFT, you would actually get a chance to buy the planet. So again, we're trying to like keep the real player in into the game. And uh, by buying the planet, you will you can uh, potentially get a group of people, or you can work with a guild to have a lot of people to play on the planet and try to like um, mine the resources on the planet. And by doing so, like doing some quests and mission on the planet, you can actually unlock tokens. That's how you play and earn. And again, this is like rewarding the people who are truly into the game and playing the game. And this is like one new approach that we're trying with, with Phantom Galaxies. And uh, I think you guys should, should keep an eye on it as a case study and like try the game uh, and tell me if it's fun. And also like um, for back to tokenomics, um, Xyz is trying to fix the demand and supply because like it, at first it was fine, but then uh, up till a point that they got too many um, players and they're giving out too many SLP per day. And then uh, they don't really have much utility for SLP besides um, breeding, but it breeding you would need AXS and so on and so on. So the utility of the token is actually not enough to burn the token that uh, it supply every day. So the tokenomic was actually, um, the balances was upset. So uh, 
we are trying to see if there's any other games out there or any other like perfect formula can can fix this. But so far, um, we invest in some other games and we are looking to the market. And uh, what we can say is that uh, we're still really early in this play to earn act, and we're trying to to find if uh, there's something we can do to balance the tokenomics. Maybe it's the Phantom Galaxy way, maybe it's not. Um, on the other side, we are seeing like play to earn games. Uh, once, on one side, they're improving the um, quality of the game, the fun elements in the game. Also, they're improving the uh, like maybe SS landing system. Because like early on for Axis, we can see a lot of guilds trying to build the same thing automation for like payment and automation to allocate different axes to different scholars and it's actually pretty tedious and there are a lot of like manual work to do but uh for example like cyber and and Pegasi, there are some like new games out there they have some in-game ss lending tools already and you don't have to build your own tools as a guild, you can just leverage the existing tools and it's actually um, helping the the momentum pick up quite quickly because the new game, sorry, the new guilds doesn't have to go to the get new game and then figure out like what kind of automation they have to do and uh, like the lower entry barrier, the easier the, the game can roll out. So I think um, what we're seeing in in the market is really um, interesting, and I think like this kind of uh, game SS lending tool may be existing for for uh, the next like maybe one to two years, or there will be some someone come up with a solution or puck in for every other games to just puck in and then having a lending tool that would be really useful and and needed in the industry, and. After talking about like tokenomics and also like maybe some tools around the play to earn games, I would like to cover community building guild relationship as well. So uh, the community building for a game for web free or play to earn game is quite different from a traditional game. I mean, uh, everyone is using Discord right now and they do expect some like 24 seven support. It's not about like uh, pressing the help button and filing a ticket in, in the app or in the game anymore. It's like they need immediate uh, reply because like a lot of money at stake and they want to see like why my wallet get locked or where's my assets and something like that. So uh, if you're building a play to earn game or considering to go into this, um, like you have to pay attention to a lot of like community building thing. Uh, no matter if it's just like CS questions that I've mentioned or how to bond the whole community together. And I think like this is the really important uh, like important factor for play to earn game to success. And also, of course, you have to have uh, guilt to help you on like promotion and everything because play to earn game is still really new concept to a lot of people. And I think guilt pay the really plays a really important role here because uh, they will have people teaching you how to onboard, like how to install wallet, how to like just all those one-on-one thing that you don't want to do with yourself. And um, I think they are still really important in the education sense, even though like I've mentioned some games actually doing learning tools and, and anything, everything. But I mean, guild would be still very important in the ecosystem because they're like a, um, like a organization trying to get as many as people to to join your game, and they are going to teach people how to play your game better. And I think you can treat them as some esports association in in the traditional like gaming space. They are going to educate people, and they're going to find the best people and like try to yield the best outcome, right? So I think um, Gil is taking a really important role and still will take a really important role to grow the game's popularity and and increase the level of, of players. And yeah, I think um, because we are investing in a lot of guilds, like around 20 of them, and we're actually having a guild accelerator uh, together with Brank 
And we're seeing a lot of people coming up. They don't really know uh, what they could do. And right now, everybody is just trying to see what's the what's the next one after XE. So what's next? And I think we have, I mean, any book of brands, we have a really good um proposition on this because we invest in both sides right so uh we can explore what's uh, what's best in the market and we can see like what's coming up in in this space and the guilds join us for for the same reason they don't know what's next in the market and they need visibility on that so uh we maintain a really good relationship with like play to earn games and guilds because um they're like uh, mutually benefit from the ecosystem. So uh, I think the, the synergy is still very, very strong there. And uh, the other thing about like play to earn game in the future would be um, more entertainment elements integrated because uh, I think a lot of like, for example, traditional industry like music like fashion they're trying to get into the space but they can't they don't really go into like metaverse just to listen to music right they don't just go in there and and watch a like fashion show or catwalk so uh what they're doing right now is trying to like integrate the elements no matter if music or fashion into the play to earn game and maybe is like a wearable into the play to earn game. Maybe it's part of the background music of, of the play to earn game. Or even we can turn a concert or turn a music festival into a play to earn element. So I think the in the near future, entertainment would be a really important part. So, uh, I mean, play to earn game may be broadened a little bit. Uh, the horizon, not only in, in the gaming space, and we're trying to target as many people as possible and trying to uh, get them to know like what web free can bring to them like the true digital ownership of, of content and I think that's how we will see the the industry growing and uh, we believe that that's uh, the, with the true ownership of digital assets is how we inspire people and have more creative creativity in the space so uh, in some more immersive experience, like uh, maybe the pleasure earn game would have some elements of like VR, AR, and like with in, in, with the uh, entertainment integrated, like fashion or fashion items, and uh, I think that would be the near future's trend for play to earn games and a lot of uh, traditional industry coming into space. Would um, they're exploring how to bring play to earn experience in like music, for example. And I think um, I, I did talk about like balance of tokenomics is really important, but I think uh, like uh, integrating with music and fashion and entertainment would be something good to explore because uh, the only thing we can reward people right now is like token, token and token, right? What if we can actually uh, reward them with some like experience online or offline with uh, like celebrities they like or with the fashion items they like and I think that would actually broaden a lot of um, a lot on what we can do in a play to earn game that hasn't I mean doesn't really have to be linked to money in the first place of course I mean the for example the jacket collaboration with Supreme let's let's say of course, it is worth some money, but even if you don't want it later, you can just sell the NFT and, and people can trade the NFT and get that items they want. So uh, I think having different parties participating in the web free space and maybe creating creating some play to earn um, experience together would definitely enrich the whole space. And um, I mean, what Animal Good Brands is doing. Uh, we're not only investing in play to earn games, like we have maybe half of our portfolio in play to earn games, but we're also building the whole infrastructure, no matter it's like layer one or layer two chain or marketplace like OpenSea or DeFi protocols. So we actually have like the whole pack of, of uh, resources and we try to bring interoperability to the play to earn games as well. So, uh, like right now, sandbox is like a metaverse, and people can 
uh, build play to earn elements on top of it. But we're still talking about like interoperability to uh, have the sandbox access to go to somewhere else and like maybe in Phantom Galaxies, you can bring your um, Snoop Dogg, like Snoop Dogg from Sandbox, maybe you can play in Phantom Galaxy, something like this. And I think this is the really good sh showcase of like network effect that we can bring to the community because I think at the end, like um, community and utility are the most important thing for metaverse, for play to earn games or for anything that has a value. So um, feel free to, to ask me questions. I'm happy to answer like any, any questions you have. And, and it, yeah, I, I don't really want to do a monologue all that long. So I'm happy to answer questions. Thank you very much. Yeah, so I see that there are some questions both in the chat and the Q&A. So actually, I guess that some of them uh, have been already answered by, uh, by your speech. But for example, we have Andre asking, uh, how can game developers reach out to any mock-up for support? Well, I mean, if you have a game already or you have a deck or something, you can reach out to us and we will see. Because we we do have a team to play games uh, like professionally. Like they will evaluate, evaluate the games if uh, they're good and if there's potential for us to invest or support. So, I mean, if you have any... Um, games developed already or uh, like whatever you can show us, you can send us um, email and then I can get the wealth and people to look into it. Perfect. Then we have a um, couple of questions from Luke. Uh, one of them is about uh, how beneficial guilds are in the creation of game communities. Well, I think um, they're, I mean, they're benefited because of the, uh, how do I say? I think it's a mutual benefit situation because if you help a game to grow, like for example, Cyborg right now is still having maybe a couple of hundreds or less than around thousands of people. It's a, it's a pretty good game. And, and I think the, the lending tools are good. If you go in early as a guild and you help like promoting it and you help to get more scholars onto it. And a lot of guilds actually have like KOL in the space, uh, no matter from traditional gaming or like real KOL, lifestyle KOL, um, they, they have those channels to promote the games. So it's like a mutual benefit to the games and the guilds itself. So of course they will be benefited later by the, the amount of the NFT. Uh, the in-game assets they have, but um, I think the relationship is more like mutually benefited. Uh, okay, following up to Andre's question, he's asking uh, whether you can share the email to which uh, they can send games and decks. Sure, sure. Let me type the email here. But uh, please do understand we have uh, all types of like pitches and, and emails come to us and we may not be able to respond like, like instantly. So um, do like have some like manage of expectation first before before you expect some like instant reply from us. Yeah, I guess that here we can uh, follow up with the question from Mario who's asking what elements of a game do you evaluate to assess its potential? Well, I think uh, the, the most important thing is the tokenomics. I mean, of course, the game has to be fun to play with and uh, like maybe the graphic and also uh, and everything just just that you, you see as a traditional game. But I think for a blockchain game, the most important thing is the tokenomics and also the team. And is it um, is it aligned to have a long-term vision? Because like animal brands, we're not looking into like just um, just like pump and dump. So I think it would make sense if we can work together in the sense that um, work towards a long-term goal. So um, the vesting period of the of the token will be long, and and just want to see the team actually have the like domain knowledge and expertise to build the game that they promise to have because a lot of um, a lot of game out there uh, or pitch us before um, 
they still need time to build the game. So what we can see maybe is a demo, maybe it's a trailer, maybe it's just a deck. So we will have to rely deeply on like um, the tokenomics and the team um, ability to to judge. Of course, if you have a up and running game, uh, that would be much easier for, for us to see because like uh, you have built something already. So uh, I think you will have to think about the tokenomics better before you come to us. But of course, I mean, if you don't really know for sure, um, you can still come to us and we can offer like token support and, and tokenomics expert help. And sorry about like the, the email earlier. It's not pre PL. It's supposed to be this one. So sorry, please. Let me delete this one. It's supposed to be press, I guess. Let me let me check. Hold on, hold on. Uh, is it PL? Because um, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, hold on. Can I can you send you the email later? Um, I have to check whether which one is the correct one. They'll yeah, send no you the words. wrong one, gonna, or else your your message will become would be nowhere. In, in the in the ecosystem so let me let me check and maybe we can take the next question while i'm checking yeah sure so uh, we have another question from luke who's asking uh, whether play to earn and uh, in general nfts uh, can be considered uh, as a bubble right now well i think nft like uh, apparently that would that that is a bubble before like for some people launching some trashy profile pick project and they're trying to grab money they have a roadmap that they can't really build and a lot of a lot of uh projects are like that and and also some celebrities launching um some profile picture projects and they don't really have follow-up and they are not building the community genuinely and those projects are I mean, building a bad reputation for for the industry, and um, that's something we are not hoping to see. But of course, I mean, in the space that is so rapidly going and growing, and also money is so easy to raise right now, um, definitely that would be some some bad seed in in the pot. So I think um, is unavoidable. But uh, I think the the like sustainable one or the one who plan for long-term will stay in the future. So uh, I would say um, most of them would not be surviving in, in the long run, but um, I have confidence that like animal brands, we have a um, great, I mean, depth of roots that we have been developing in, in the space. And we are looking for not short-term for sure. We're looking for long-term um like investment so uh, a lot of games or a lot of like experience we're building out there we're not looking for short-term financial gain and uh, we are here to build like some uh, long-term actually useful experience or uh, like nft with great utility and actually benefit the community okay uh then we have a question from mike asking uh, um in uh, like Talking about Axi, how do you think that tokenomics can become more sustainable? That's a good question. Uh, I, I don't think they have the answer themselves, but I, what I think is that um, I think the usage of SLP should be broadened. So uh, right now it's only breeding, but maybe you can use it for energy replenishment. You can use it for some other features and they will um, they will be unlocking the land use and land play later, right? So maybe having um, more utility for the SLP, that would definitely help because like the, the reason why it's in balance right now is because everyone is earning SLP and there's no use of it. So they sell it and the sell pressure is so high so the price go down. So I think having more utility for the SLP would be really useful, uh, not only linear usage, not only in breeding, but in different kind of usage. And maybe you need to calculate how many SLP you want to use to replenish your energy and how much you can earn and everything. Um, and that's more like strategic play and um, just more way for people to spend the SLP and have some in-game privilege. Maybe they can buy some tools, they can buy something uh, with the SLP. So it's more, uh, not so linear, 
because right now it's super linear and it's like the circle is pretty easy to 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 see and i think um is yeah they should go to the direction with um, more network effects and maybe uh some some more um like unlocking some more in-game features or utility in, in general perfect so i think that we have the last two questions uh, the first one being do you think that a mixture of free to play and play to earn represents the best user acquisition strategy um sorry can you repeat the no. hold on yeah uh, luke is asking uh, whether a mixture of uh, uh, free to play and play to earn represents the best user acquisition strategy well i think um it depends but uh to me i think free to play to earn is a is a, is the best like acquisition strategy because you want to attract different type of users like some of them they want to get in to get financial gain but some of them just want to have fun right uh they don't really have to pay to get in to this to the game to, in the first place i think so uh we try to cast a net as wide as possible and i think having free to play to earn is actually beneficial to the community building people can try the game and if they think uh, they want to make money out of it, they can just choose to go to the NFT path and then they can do play to earn. But if not, they can just play and enjoy the experience. And it's always great to have people joining the game and spreading the word. So I think um, free to play to earn would be would be a very good like uh, onboarding strategy. And at least that's how I see it. And that's what we're doing with Phantom Galaxies. But of course, if there's something like um, some premium brands like Board Ape trying to go come into the space, there's no way you can earn a Board Ape inside a Board Ape game, right? So that must be some like entrance fee or entrance like NFT that you will have to bid. But I think it really depends on the nature of the game that you're developing. But I think for a general, like generally a game for the mass public should adopt this like free to play to earn strategy and uh, for for um for user acquisition okay last question and uh, uh, the question is which nft use case will be the most useful mm, which nft use case will be more useful yeah i guess uh you mean like in terms of like impact like uh, uh I don't know precisely. Can you look? Can you clarify a little bit on the questions you have? Let's... Can they actually speak, or they can't really talk because they're in uh, the no. audience? Side? Yeah, no, they cannot talk. Oh. Okay. In real life terms. So yeah, like I guess what like how NFTs can be used to impact like in real life, I guess. Would be more most useful in real life term. Yeah, so yeah. do you mean link with like physical perks or Okay. So um well I think um maybe it's not just play to earn i mean if we're just talking about nft in general um i think nft is just a representation it's just a tool it can be representing anything like digitally um like digital assets and whatever can be digitally represented so if we want to link it with physical world like maybe some exp example that i used before maybe is fashion brands like people lined up to buy sneakers in, in the past, right? Maybe we can uh, mimic the whole experience and bring it online and they can buy sneakers, NFT, and uh, they can do it with some some efforts needed. It's not lined up anymore. Maybe they will have to do some uh, collaboration with a, a game or so to finish a quest or finish something. So um, to, to input more efforts rather than just like... Uh, pumping the price of the sneakers, just line up like uh, that maybe we can have some more genuine 
brand's engagement for that. And I think this is one like good use of example of how to leverage NFT because like uh, I think some some NFT usage of linking uh, the digital assets with a physical, for example, physical art is kind of um, not necessary. And I think those use cases are not really useful if you want to link it with um, like physical art and everything. But of course, I mean, their exception, uh, their really good example of Damien Hurst about the current uh, the NFT series called The Currencies. You can look into it later. Damien Hurst is a uh, is a popular artist before this web free space, and um, he they he he launched a really interesting series called The Currencies and link it with physical copies. But both of them are not really gonna be existing concurrently. So at the end of the period, we will have to choose whether you want to keep the NFT or you want to keep the physical copies. If you want to keep the NFT, they will burn your physical copy. So uh, I mean, this is one example of how you can leverage NFT as a tool. And I think, again, we're still at a very early stage right now, and we're trying to explore the possibility of things. And uh, I'm having like different partnerships with like fashion brands. That's why I mentioned the fashion usage and of course i mean we're looking into music and maybe um, music into fractional ownership of music would be some interesting um, showcase of how nft can be used as a tool uh, to prove the ownership of digital assets so this is just like some um, like uncharted area for us to explore and i think uh, some we're still expecting to see a lot of like creativity or innovation in this space so right now there's no like the best use case from 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 me or from the industry i think we're still evolving every day and i can just say there are some fun experience uh, some like some fun um experience and experiment that we're doing and uh we're waiting to see how it's go uh, how it goes in in the long term okay uh i think that's it i don't see any other question here so uh thank you very much Zaf, for uh joining us today for these these habitos for this webinar it's been really a pleasure having you and uh, uh, thanks to everybody who attended this webinar and uh, see you in the next episode. Yeah, I think, uh, sorry about the email. I will have to double check if it's uh, the email that I sent. Maybe, uh, I'm not sure if you will send a like recap or anything, but uh, I will send the um, email I'm... to you later and you can communicate with them. Yeah, sure. I'm going to upload the video the registration on, uh, on YouTube, and I'm going to um, type the email in the, in the comments there so everyone can sure, have access. Sure. Okay, Sounds perfect. Good. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a nice day. Thank bye you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.